the Japanese Type 96 and 99 light machine guns. These are some of the lesser known and lesser shown firearms in the movies, but two of the best light machine guns of World War II. Japanese industry and design was often underestimated during the war, and these light machine guns were a perfect example of this. Combined, only 90,000 of these weapons were made, with their production ending at or before war's end. However, on film, there are a few examples of these weapons, so let's take a look at the Type 96 and 99 and some of the movies they've been featured in. Before Japan developed the Type 96, their first decent light machine gun was the Type 11, a truly rare machine gun to find on film, but it was used in conjunction with the Type 99 and 96 throughout the war. The weapon stands out with its hopper design, which could use the standard clips used with Japanese rifles, making ammo logistics easier. The Type 11 came into active service in 1922, and some 29,000 were produced by the time production stopped in 1941. This was the primary Japanese light machine gun through the Manchurian incident and in the early stages of the Second Sino-Japanese War. Many of the faults of this weapon would be fixed with the Type 96. The hopper, though a novel idea, was far too exposed to dust and dirt, causing the weapon to frequently jam. The 11 also saw limited use mounted in early Japanese tanks. The Type 96 went into production in 1936 to replace the Type 11. The 96 continued to use standard rifle ammunition of the time, the 6.5 by 50 mm semi-rim Japanese cartridge, a smaller round for a machine gun. Generally speaking, while their weapons are extremely serviceable and well made, they lag far behind our own in design, durability, and effectiveness. There has typically been a bias against Japanese weapons. Some people when looking at a Type 96 or 99 might assume it's a knockoff of another famous World War II light machine gun used by the British, the Bren gun. What's that? What the f*** is that? It's me Bren gun! Don't you think you could have bought something a little bit more practical? Though mechanically the Bren and the 9699 have similar origins, both using design elements from the Czech ZB, the Bren and Japanese light machine guns have different mechanics, with only minor similarities, such as the long stroke gas piston. Unlike the Bren gun for which the British Army purchased a license for, the Japanese ended up capturing many Czech ZBs while fighting Chinese forces. 30,000 ZBs were exported to China starting in 1927. The Chinese also purchased Canadian made Bren guns during the war. The weapon featured in Death and Glory in Changde may intend to represent a ZB, but it's a post-war Bren conversion fitted with an AK-47 magazine. Ultimately, Japanese weapon designer Kinjiro Nambu only used certain elements of the ZB in his design. Primarily, all his machine guns originate from the French Hotchkiss machine gun, a license that was legitimately purchased by the Japanese. The closest thing to a direct copy of the Czech ZB is the Type 97 machine gun, primarily used in Japanese tanks. The 96 and 99 did benefit from the same layout as the Brennan ZB, particularly with the magazine position they share in common, which allows the assistant gunner to quickly reload from the top, without the gunner having to angle or move the machine gun. The barrels could also be quickly changed, and the weapon reloaded from either side. The Type 96 weighed 9 kilograms, or 20 pounds, only slightly more than the BAR, and a bit less than the Bren gun. Magazines held 30 rounds, and the rate of fire was 550 rounds a minute. It was a poor anti-aircraft gun, but great at squad support, accurate at long range, and deadly when used in ambush tactics. Closer, those guys will be using bayonets instead of propellers. The effective firing range for the 96 was 800 meters or 870 yards. It was considered accurate and fairly reliable. The 96 had some minor problems with stoppages due to tolerance issues between the bolt and barrel. 
An oiler on the magazine loader was meant to help prevent feeding issues, but this was found to be ineffective and done away with in the 99. The Type 99 remained relatively unchanged when production started in 1939, with the biggest change being the ammunition, upgraded to a 7.7mm round. A noteworthy Japanese film featuring the Type 96 is Japan's Longest Day, featuring the machine gun this time being used against Japanese forces following the true events of the Kyujo incident, which involved elements of the Japanese army attempting to stop the broadcasting of the Emperor's surrender. The movie captures both the wariness and fanaticism of Japan post Hiroshima and Nagasaki's nuclear bombing. The 99 was more reliable and easier to manufacture than the 96. 53,000 would be produced, low for an American or European standard, but an improvement over the 96. The effective firing range also increased significantly, and many Japanese light machine gunners used this weapon in a sniper role, much similar to British Bren gunners. The gun could mount a 2.5 telescopic sight. The larger rounds also worked better in the Pacific, punching through thick jungle foliage. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a rifle called a Nambu. It's used by Japanese snipers in the Southwest Pacific. It has long range and great accuracy. One very unique feature of the 99 and 96 compared to any other multi-purpose or light machine gun was that a bayonet could be mounted to it. This was largely useless due to the weight and size of the weapon, unless you were very strong. The Japanese, however, trained more significantly with bayonets compared to other armies, believing they aided in an aggressive and offensive mindset for a soldier. <laughs> Tactically, light machine guns were essential to the Japanese army. The Japanese lacked submachine guns or automatic rifles, particularly compared to the American army, though a few Type 100 machine guns worked their way into service. Typically, a Japanese rifle squad could only count on one light machine gun per 12 men, all who were operating bolt-action rifles. Luckily, at least for the Japanese soldiers, Japanese heavy and light machine guns tended to be built well to dissipate heat, have slow rates of fire, and very quick reload methods meaning that machine gunners were almost always able to continuously fire. To get a point of view of facing and using these machine guns, watch Flags of Our Fathers and Letters from Iwo Jima. They tell virtually the same story, one from a Japanese and the other from an American perspective, showing the true horrors of both operating and facing Japanese machine guns. Nick, look out! Oh, One interesting appearance of the Type 99 is in The Thin Man Goes Home, which was actually made during World War II with a trophy captured Type 99, oddly with a suppressor. The production of this film is insightful to America's industrial power, in that America is making entertaining murder mystery movies with captured Japanese weapons as props, while Japan struggles to arm its frontline troops. Oh, you were always the smart boy, Nick. You know all the answers. You caught the big fish. You beat me at everything. A must-watch is HBO's The Pacific, with an incredible attention to historic detail, covering battles from Guadalcanal in 1942 to Iwo Jima in the last year of the war. Go The most notable Japanese film featuring a Type 99 must be Oba the Last Samurai, based on a true story following a handful of survivors fighting a guerrilla war with dwindling supplies and broken equipment in Saipan. These were some of the last Japanese forces fighting the Second World War. <laughs> Ah. Uh.
All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for sticking it out to the end. As always, feel free to expand on the subject in the comments section. I was a bit limited on movie footage for this one, but I hope you found some new movies to watch, and we'll see you in the next video.